Jared Wilson commits to Georgia, the class of 2021. Dean Leggy, Matt DeBeer, we're going to get you through this breaking news here real quick. Matt, I did want to get you on the phone just because whenever Sam Pittman and, and uh, Kirby Smart combine to get a kid, they usually get a big kid. Tell us more about Jared and what people can expect from him. Yeah, he's another guy with size around 6'4", uh, 325, kind of an under-the-radar prospect. He's uh, you know a three-star prospect right now on all the sites out there. But uh, again, if Sam Pittman likes a guy and wants to accept his commitment, you know that really says everything you need to know. Uh, maybe the best offensive line coach in the country, obviously one of the top recruiters in the entire country. So Sam Pittman usually gets his pick of guys from across the country, and he accepted a commitment from Jared Wilson, a guy who committed uh, – to Georgia this morning, visited Georgia, I believe it was the first week of uh, September, and then was back later in September for the Georgia-Notre Dame game. So he's a guy who's been on campus a little bit. Georgia's been recruiting him for a while, 2021 kid, so not you know a big, flashy, five-star name, especially in this 2020 class, but he's definitely a, kind of an under-the-radar guy who uh, I think Sam Pittman likes and knows that he can transform him into something bigger and better down the road. When you start thinking about under the radar guys, Georgia has really recruited not so under the radar guys um, for their offensive line, but several of them have have gotten pretty good pretty quick. I mean, I don't think I did not expect Trey Hill to be a starter his freshman year. That's what happened there. You've got uh, Justin Schaefer, who has come along and been developed into a, a not just a role player but a, a heavy contributor for the Dogs. With Jared Wilson, where will where will he play on the line? It looks like a guard, um, and how does he fit into this uh, this sort of pattern? Besides the size, how does he sit, fit into the pattern that Sam and company have been have been uh, using over time here? Well, real quick, Solomon Kinley's another guy who uh, came in as a three star, and I, then Pittman has really turned him into a big time starter. I knew, um, I knew I was forgetting someone who started. <laughs> yeah, definitely Solomon Kinley, a guy that you know, um, was big like this. And we didn't know a lot about him, frankly. Right. And, and right. So very ahead. similar type of situation. But uh, Jared obviously does have the size. He plays tackle for his West Side North Carolina team. But I definitely think he's going to move in and play guard. Uh, just watching him a little bit on tape and talking to other people close around him. Uh, very good footwork. Uh, really good balance, especially for a guy 325, 330 pounds. So uh, kind of light on his feet there and you know, still growing. He's still got some baby weight on him, so he's still got plenty of time to transition his body, like uh, you know Solomon Kinley has, and Isaiah Wilson, and all these other guys who have really changed the second they got on campus. So um, plays tackle right now. Uh, I do think he'll slide in and play guard. Um, you know, we'll see. It's tough to know if these guys can pass protect because they're not facing elite, you know, pass rushers, right. especially in the area he plays in. But I mean, he's very good against the run. He can overpower a lot of these guys that he's playing against. But uh, luckily for him, I do think it's you know a little bit of a project because he does need to take some uh, some of that baby weight off and continue to imp- improve and perfect his craft. So with Georgia taking five offensive linemen in 2020, they're not going to be expecting Jared Wilson to come in and try to push for playing time. They don't need him. So he's a guy who I think is definitely going to benefit from maybe – sitting on the on the bench a year, maybe a little more, hitting that weight room, and then becoming the player that Sam Pittman obviously thinks he can be down the road. You look at the future of this offensive line, and you still have you know, a lot of guys who have, have yet to really even make an impact at Georgia. Trust, McClendon, uh, Webb, Erickson, Condon, um, you know, Broderick Jones, Ratledge, I got to see Braun this past. Excuse me, yeah, I got to see Braun this past uh, week before the game with the Gators. But these kids are all. I mean, it's it's becoming a mixture now. I mean, you've got a few five star kids. You've got some development kids. Um, what do you think uh, time buys this program? They didn't have time in 2017. Those guys had to go. But now you're talking about a kid in 2021 who who might not see the field until 2024. Yeah, I mean, uh, right now it's all about building depth uh, on both the offensive and defensive line. I think Kirby Smart and his staff have done a really good job there. But uh, you bring in a guy like Sam Pittman, who is the best. He's going to you know get you quality guys who can come in and start and play. But he's also going to provide depth for you. And again, he filled 
this 2020 class up pretty quick. I mean, their last commitment, I think maybe uh, Chad Lindbergh, who committed in the summer. Mm -hmm. So he's had a lot of time to focus on these 2021 kids. And when you are an elite recruiter and an elite program, you're able to do this stuff and get guys on board early who want to be there, uh, who don't want to wait around. They want to be Bulldogs, and that leaves Sam Pittman – uh, the ability to go and recruit a 2021 kid like Jared Wilson and continue to recruit a guy like Amarius Mims, Micah Morris, and others. Yeah, you've got Mims, and, uh, and you know he's a kid that I got to, uh, got a chance to see not that long ago. He would be the prize uh, recruit on the offensive line for this program. Where does quickly where does Georgia stand on that front? I think they're still in a really really good spot. He's going to visit Alabama this weekend. Alabama is still very much in the mix. I think he likes Clemson a lot too, but he's been to Georgia countless times. Uh, you know, that's Georgia country and, and middle Georgia and Bleckley County there. They were one of the first teams on him to really push and make him a priority. And again, he, he's there a, a ton, a, as many times as he can go. He's been to Athens, but he's going to take his visits. I know LSU is another team he's really high on. He wants to get over there. Uh, I think he was there earlier this year. Uh, I think he plans to get back there soon. So, you know, with these five-star guys, everyone's going to be coming after him and pushing him harder and harder. But George has been there since day one, and I think they're still probably the leader for him right now. I want everybody to click on the uh, screen right now, send you to listen to what Matt had to say yesterday about Carson Beck uh, and all the other guys that we visited over time. Uh, let's keep this conversation going. Tell us what you think down below. Dean Leggy, uh, Matt DeBerry, dogpost.com, D-A-W-G-P-O-S-T.com. Go ahead and listen to what Matt had to say yesterday in his recruiting report. Thanks for listening to us, and we'll see you over on the website.